what's up you guys welcome back to my channel so today i wanted to go over some things as far as mortuary makeup and what to expect my experience details i didn't realize so many people would actually be into mortuary makeup um i myself didn't know like going into it what to expect it was just something that somebody asked me to do and in that particular year i was like you know what i'm not turning down anything i'm making sure that whatever comes my way i'm gonna take the job and i'm gonna do it and i'm gonna see if it's something that i'm interested in so with that being said i decided to go ahead and film another video so this is my second experience i want to really thoroughly um elaborate on my my first experience because a lot of people said that they didn't understand what i was saying and this time around i'm making sure that i'm letting you guys know about products and just experience so if that's something that you're into then make sure you keep watching so my biggest thing is that i want to bring ease to anybody who is deciding to take a job in mortuary makeup for me i feel like because i've done it twice and i feel like that i'm comfortable with it I could pretty much say if someone asked, oh, I'm a mortuary makeup artist as well. If you're thinking like, is this something that I need to go to school for or anything like that? No. From my experience, people are going to hit you up and they're going to be like, we're in need of a makeup artist. Um, well, do you feel comfortable doing makeup on the deceased? You know, can you do it or do you want to do it? That type of thing. And it's really up to you whether you say yes or no. And I believe doing that particular process is where you find out, is this, am I a mortuary makeup artist? And it's like, for me, if you feel comfortable, if you did a good job, if people are willing to pay you for that job and your work, then you're a mortuary makeup artist. That's how I look at it. So if someone was to ask me like, are you a mortuary makeup artist? I would say yes. Yeah. Now, I will say, I thought that because uh, typically, you will see a mortician do the makeup of the person who they have embalmed. So for me, I thought that that was all schooling in itself. So the way I looked at it was, oh, morticians are the makeup artists. So because they go to school, you need to go to school for that. But I didn't know that people actually hit up regular people that are makeup artists and say, oh, do you feel comfortable doing makeup on someone? So for me, that's why I said, I don't feel like you necessarily have to go to school for it, but to get into like the embalming um, process and things of that nature, then yes, of course you have to go to school. So with my first experience, um, I did go over that story in a video prior to this one. So I will have it linked above for you guys to check it out. But um, this, second experience was very different from the first one because i kind of went in with an idea of what to expect and then this time around i did some things differently the family wanted like a really clean natural look but both families wanted a natural look but the second family didn't want eyeshadow so the first family didn't have a lot going on with the eyeshadow. I literally just probably sprinkled some little like glitter specks on the eyes. It was nothing like major. But this family, the second family was just like, look, she wore eyelashes. We want you to um, do her brows, her lips, and her face. That's it. I'm like, cool. With the second person, I didn't really, really know what to expect, but I had an idea because I did it before. So because it was my second time and this was like another person that I hadn't really saw, I was just like, okay, I don't know how this person passed, so I don't know what she would look like, you know? Um, so that was like my, my main thing, but I did still go in and accomplish what needed to be accomplished. So let's talk about time. The time frame is typically, I feel like you'll be in there 30 to 45 minutes tops. It's not long at all. Like 
if you looking at a client that you have and they want like a really nice natural look, it's the same exact thing. You're gonna be in there for about 30 to 45 minutes. I like to do um, more if I see that more is needed. So if they may have like some peach fuzz or something like that, then I'm going in with my razor and you know removing what I can to make the person look as presentable as possible because their body is gonna be on display for people to see. So if you are the artist, you wanna make sure that you are doing everything that you can to make this person look as presentable as possible. So as far as pricing, with time and pricing, I think it is like the best thing ever because for 45 minutes, if you charging someone, what, $300, you just made a quick 345 minutes. Like, you can't beat that, to be honest. So if it's something that you're worried about, I would just mainly think of it like that. I'm not more so a person that's focused on the money because this second time around, I really realized that this was probably something that I would take serious and actually do as a job. So with pricing, I feel like the more experience you have and the quality of your work really determines the price that you will charge someone. So this time around, I charge the people that I worked with 250. Um, they tipped me an extra fifty dollars, so I got paid three hundred. With that, it kind of made me realize, okay, well, you could charge three hundred if that's what you wanted to do. Um, the response I got from the family member that reached out was that they really loved the makeup. So in my mind, I'm like, okay, well, if I'm constantly and consistently getting that people are loving my work, then maybe I should charge more. But it's something to really like research and take into account. I don't want to just really like jump off on the deep end and be like, oh, well, $1,200. And it's like, you got to be more realistic because these people just lost a family member. You don't really know how their finances are set up. It's not really on you to think of that, but that's just the type of person that I am. Like, I think about things like that. And also, you'll be more than likely to get the job over someone else if your pricing is not, like, too crazy. So... What was said to me was that the person that they were considering was charging like 500 plus to come out and do the makeup. Um, considering, I mean, depending on what type of person you are, I can understand why someone would charge more to actually do the makeup, but it's not like we're doing the mortician job. Like we don't have to stuff anything. We're literally going in and maybe creating illusions of certain things that may have not been filled enough or that was filled too much. Um, sometimes you had a family request that you go in and make the lips look fuller. Um, this was based off my own experience or maybe even smaller. I haven't gotten that, but I'm sure some people probably, you know, it's probably different for different people. but. As an artist, we know what that looks like to make something look fuller or make it less of what it looks like. So with expectations, sometimes you will be working alone or other times the mortician may be inside with you while you're doing the job. Either way it go, it's a more comfortable space, I would say, for you as a makeup artist. Sometimes the family is also there too, depending on who wants to be present because my last, well, my last person, her family member did not want to be there because it was just too much on him. It was her son. So he was just like, nah, I don't want to see that right now. Like, so he probably was just trying to avoid as long as possible actually seeing her that way. So he was kind of just directing me on what he wanted done. And I just went in and did what he told me to do. Like I said, the mortician, they kind of just, you know, sit in the background. So whatever relationship they have with the family, with the work that they had to do, 
they do it and then when you come in and do your job they're literally like out of the way sitting back not even you know like not even giving you a like a suggestion unless you ask so it's pretty much you sitting in and you know doing the work and that's about it I mean for me I think that's the best thing because I don't like to work with people like over me so um that's one of like the pros I guess of doing mortuary makeup so let's talk about the comfort level depending on what type of person you are it can be very uncomfortable I mean I can only imagine for me because I don't have any connection to these people it's a little bit easier for me to go in and do the job without any type of you know emotions involved it's really mind over matter for me like when I go in I'm just thinking about, you know, of course that the person has passed away, but I think for me, it just makes me appreciate my life more. And then I just get into mode where I'm like, I have to make this person look as beautiful as I can um, to be displayed for people to see them for the last time. So I just really just zone out. Emotions are not really there for me during that time um this one last time though i did get a little emotional but it was after the fact um it was more so because of the empathy i felt for the son in losing his mother so i got a little emotional about that i just really felt i really felt for him so i had to like say something that was just the part where i was emotional but I haven't experienced doing makeup for someone that I am related to or that I am close to, so I don't know what that would look like for me. I can imagine if anything, it would probably be, I probably would be emotional, but not overwhelmingly, like where I'm just like crying over the body while I'm doing the makeup, like hysterically, nah, but it probably, definitely depends on how close I am to the person. But I believe I could still get the job done regardless. So I think it really just depends on you and who you are as a person, honestly. So like I was saying with the expectations, sometimes you're gonna see some discoloration um, with the lips maybe. I've had someone have like dried up blood on their lips and I just, went over it with lipstick and it covered it up. I'm guessing because the mortician had already done what he was gonna do with the body, I'm guessing that he couldn't do nothing with that. So I just went over it and it was fine. As far as like overthinking things, you don't really have to. Just go with your first mind. Like that's, that's my thought process. If I'm there with the mortician and it's something that looks strange, if he haven't taken care of it for me i'm like okay maybe that's just something he couldn't do anything about um you can still ask questions though questions are always good so if you do see something strange oh th is this something is it this okay or you know just anything just ask questions expect pale skin peach fuzz um bulging eyes maybe definitely expect um the body to be cold that's like a given it's gonna be cold not anything we're used to obviously so those are things that you can expect with doing mortuary makeup so as you would with any of your regular everyday makeup clients think of it the same way it's just that the person is no longer alive and the things that I mentioned are the expect expectations that you should have in going in. Depending on your client, the request may be different. I've worked with two older people. Um, I can imagine if someone was younger, maybe like 30s or mid 20s, they would probably ask for a different request with the makeup. So that person may 
depending on how that person wore their makeup when they were alive, they may request something like a full glam beat, like be expecting, um, honestly, whatever, but obviously if you can just do natural makeup, then that's great. Um, what I would say is natural always work best. If you're a little heavy handed with the foundation, I would recommend that you really focus on less is more because people don't want their family members to look dead. Like they don't want that. So going in and I feel like because times are really changing, um, we have more of an opportunity to make people look different from what they've looked like in the past. A lot of times we saw people um, growing up or just in movies and things like that and they actually look like they were deceased. We have the opportunity to change that um, narrative. So as far as like, a, you know how when a person say like, oh, uh, if we have on too much makeup being alive, then people are like, oh, she looks dead we don't want that for them and it's possible for you not to to overdo your part so just keep that in mind so let's talk about products 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 this is exciting for me because everything about the mortuary makeup experience is except for the the part of the person being deceased is like easy going uh, the products all under ten dollars literally so if you go to Walgreens or the beauty supply store I this last time with the Walgreens everything I got was probably um, fifteen dollars added up all together no more than fifteen dollars all together each product though all under ten dollars so I got a pack of disposable brushes from Walgreens. Um, I don't remember the exact price, but they were definitely under $10. I got powder puffs, disposable, um, lip, lip wands and mascara wands. I already had lip wands, lip brushes, wands. Yeah, I had those already, so I didn't have to get those. Um, cosmetic wedges, definitely get you some of those. Eyebrow razor is a big one because they are going to look to you for you to groom the person. So if their brows are a little crazy, they want you to fix them up a little bit. Gloves, gloves, gloves. Gloves are a big one for me because I'm heavy on sanitation and just being sanitary in general. I did see that the mortuary makeup artist went in and kind of like was touching the body with his hands like bare hands um i'm guessing depending on your level of comfort but for me i don't feel comfortable with that um obviously that's not the best thing to do um i don't know i'm just thinking about like being sanitary so that's that's my thing um not that you know it's anything wrong with that i don't it's nothing wrong with either one that's how i put it but i'm more of a sanitary person so i will wear gloves highly recommend it spatulas and palettes so you want to get a spatula because if you have any products like foundation that you are you know um taken out of a foundation palette you can use the spatula to just go in and take it out and get enough where you don't have to go back in and you know double dip after you have already used whatever to apply the makeup so with foundation i typically use foundation palettes so i work with Krylon or ben nye those two brands are really big for special effects makeup as well when I first started, that just made a lot of sense to me to use makeup that they would use for special effects makeup. I don't know why, but I just felt like in my mind, like they go hand in hand. So those were the products that I 
initially just thought to have and those were those were the products that I got. I did hear um, watching a video someone say that they were using Wet n Wild products, L'Oreal, like regular drugstore foundation. So that works too but like I said you definitely want to use a light hand with those type of products because we do know that they can build up and look very masky and we don't that's not what we want for that so and the mortician's makeup kit because i did happen to see that while i was there they had some clippers some peroxide like a brush a comb i believe if i'm not mistaken but that would make sense because they're there most of the time with the body um and just in case the person don't hire a person to do certain things i'm guessing they can do it if they know how i did see foundation as well and i believe the foundation that i saw was like wet and wild or something like that if i'm not mistaken so you can use regular makeup products you just got to be a beast with them them blended skills um I mean, obviously it's still skin, but it's just cold. So it wouldn't be as warm as we are. Just keep that in mind. So my final thoughts, I actually found that I am very interested in moisturary makeup now at this point. Like I feel like I could possibly do this as a career. So I've been looking into it. I'm gonna look into it a little further. I actually know someone who knows someone who runs a funeral home. So I'm gonna look into that and see um, how I could be a part of that. Main thing for me is that it really brings me joy to be able to help a family to put their loved ones to rest and bring them ease and comfort about actually laying them to rest and knowing that, you know, their last time seeing them they look beautiful so for you if someone reached out to you and they asked you to do the job what i would say to you is the way that you think about whether or not you should take the job is ask yourself questions like am i comfortable with working with someone who is deceased when i hear the word deceased and think about a person is that something that i want to be around like do I really, really feel comfortable doing this? Am I forcing it? Like, even if you were forcing it, to what extent are you forcing it? Is it to the point where you know, like you're super shaken up and you just can't do it? Even after watching this video, like if that's something that you know, like, no, I cannot do it. It's probably not for you. If you do decide to do the job, I would say definitely take pride in your work make sure that you love what you did um you have time to make mistakes and you know also make those mistakes better if you see something you don't like they're not in a hurry like so you can change things that you don't like if the family asks you questions and you know if they want you to change something change it it's literally that easy nothing to worry about like i said it's definitely mind over matter so if you feel like you have a strong enough mental to go in and do a job i would say go and do it you guys you have nothing to worry about take it from me i am an emotional person but when i go in and i just understand what's happening i'm okay so with that being said, I hope that I've helped you guys in making a decision and I hope that you decide to do it. And if you do, then make sure that you comment and let me know how things went. If this helped you out, make sure that you give it a like and I will definitely catch you guys in my next video. Until then, stay blessed and stay beautiful. Don't forget to subscribe.